So uh, thank you very much. Um, I'm absolutely convinced that uh, Diego and Mam would have been very brave to, to invite me here. But I'm looking really forward to be grilled at least by you and me by Dr. Landrono too. So, so I'm looking forward really to do this. But just let me uh, to say some, some, some thoughts. I will not overrule you with data. We are used to do this normally, but I don't do that today. This is the position we have. And nowadays, surgery is still curative oncology, point. And our contribution is, let's say, significant, to be very, very uh, curious. So what's actually the standard of care stage four? Because we didn't talk about this stage, in which I found that local treatments have a place when we select the right patients, when we do this. Standard of care is normally, you give a palliative chemo, some immunotherapy for $10,000 and three weeks lo uh, longer survival. And somewhere in between, you, have, you can have some local treatments in a palliative terms. This is conventional oncology, still practiced everywhere, <laughs> almost everywhere. Let's just think now, what if, what if we will find very early a lot of cancers, for example, in this case, prostate cancer, which would have in 40% less than five metastases in the primary setting. Just assume that. What if when we find a lot of breast cancer, which are by claim of gynecologists, the most difficult cancer of the world, always uh, systemic disease, as Bernard Fischer stated, and it was wrong. At this day it was wrong, it is today wrong. 77% less than two metastases. And there are this data, 2,500 patients. Let's assume lung cancer, but this number, one or two organs, almost the half, at least less than three metastatic sites, or other data. Uh, these are some hundreds of patients. These are 1,700 patients. Just to warm up for you to say, we have something to do in stage four if we select patients well. So let's say in my, in my eyes, oncology is first just concepts. Dr. Lontrono showed you some, some heroes from the American oncology, and I'll show you just a very uh, faster, Paget Halstead. The first concept of oncology ever started here. That is the point, almost in the same years, you know, very easily. Keynes, the guy uh, Jens know very well from thymectomy and stuff like that, he was even specialist in breast cancer. And he did a very interesting thing, lumpectomy with radiation in 30s, 1930s. Nobody believed him, but it was effective not to do the big radical mastectomy. And the big one, and still, this is what he said. Cancer is systemic, and let's see, you and me have actually no real effect. But that's what's wrong, and it is wrong today, just to disagree with Mr. Landrono. And this is the guy who started uh, some years later, the ch um, physician in chief on Harvard, Dr. Hellman, to show that there might be a intermediate state in which metastasized disease could be even curatively treated if we select the patient the right way. So I repeat, the selection criteria is the, the alpha and omega of everything. We have enough data now, cell, there are some micro RNAs which might be very indicative for treating right oligometastasis from the polymetastasis. We have data in nature, we have data in cell, we have now a highly publishable data from metastasis research which could show that local treatment in stage four might be effective. Nature, radio surgery or surgery, it doesn't matter actually at all, local treatment could be curative. That is the my main message I would like. And JCO, as uh, we showed it. So that would be kind of dialect synthesis of the old treatment Fisher's doctrine and the Halstedian. In terms of saying, we might be able to figure out who are these patients with the intermediate state of metastasized disease. The number would be, be effective. Size might be very um, important. Are these metastases synchronous or metachronous? The int interval from the primary disease to the metastases six months or three years, which is very important. Breast cancer patients, we had a lot, at least 80, 50, 80, 85 patients who had first metastases in brain 
after three or four years, we could be even cure in late seven, eight years for breast metastasis and brain, met breast cancer and, uh, brain metastasis. And my grading might be interesting in this term. So you are talking about resectability. We will talk about radioability, something like that. And to see if we have controlled primary, synchronous and metachronous, if we have some molecular variables of the tumors, that means if we understand the biology of tumors and the morbidity of treatments, might be we change and shift totally the situation in stage four. That would be something like that. We would be able, you and we, would be able even to put surgery and radiosurgery into the front of stage four disease when we know and understand how to select the right patients, the right cohort. Of course, with chemotherapy and 10,000 euro immune therapy and stuff like that. That would be our concept, and we have realized these concepts in our uh, multidisciplinary teams for many, many years now, four or five years, to say, okay, when we have one, two, three metastases in the lung, in the brain, whatever, maybe there's a cure, there's a potential of cure. And polymetastasized situation, okay, this is palliative chemo. That would be our statement. Stage four is not stage four, first. Comparative effectiveness research is possible. Let's say the so-called controlled randomized trial is not a dogma. It was very beautiful when Bernard Fisher state started with that in the 60s, but in, this is not a natural law. We can do that by comparative research in terms of radiosurgery and surgery without randomization. So randomization is not a dogma. Helmut Hypertides versus Fisher de Crean. Use any chance, this is our motto, and, and instead of therapeutic nihilism, see lung cancer, 80%, five year survival. This is not encouraging, not at all. We should do something for stage four patients and do the, do the adequate treatment, which is uniportal VATs, and in case they are not fit for surgery, then do some radio surgery. So this is actually the message. Our concept would like, look like this. Lung, brain, bones, or liver, in these terms. Either you do surgery or you do radio surgery. It doesn't matter at all in my eyes. Important is local treatment will affect the prognosis in stage four, and this is the message. If you combine it with the right immunotherapy, it would be good. If you don't select patients well, it will be <laughs> bad for them. Just for you, to show how radio surgery, the bad thing is really uh, looking what, not really very, very sexy. So it's just a very easy to do this. The other machine, cyber knife, almost the same. We put a small <laughs> gold, gold fiducial into the, into the tumor and try to, to put, let's say, this is the 100% and then to have the less dose in, in the periphery to the, of the tumor, for example, in spinal cord and other risky organs. Another one, you can see in radiation therapy very exactly what you're doing before you start with the treatment. This is one small advantage. You can see what you will maybe damage or not. So this is the first take home message that I'm almost finished. Local treatment, either surgery and best scenario or radio surgery can be curative in metastasized disease when you select patients well. So that would be the main message. And because we have been talking on stage one, lung cancer. So take it. This is the only one, the only uh, um, randomized controlled trials we had. The American one, STARS trial, and the European one did by these two guys. You know well, at least one, some of you. That was the, let's say, the dose distribution issues, not very important for you. The important thing was Unfortunately, the recruitment of both studies in the US and in the Anderson and in Amsterdam was not good. So they finished the study prior to the uh, um, endpoint and showed these results. That means actually there's no really big differences. But you have to remind, we are talking about 58 patients. That is not a valid conclusion at all. So we cannot say that that radiosurgery is better than surgery or something else. So with this, 
And then, and I will be finished now, this is uh, what Zurich Sinan against did, a kind of propensity score matched, as uh, Mr. Londrino did, for surgical and non-surgical patients, and you, you can see over survival is similar. Either you have meta-analysis, or you have a non-valid randomized controlled trials. Today, we cannot say what's better, what's not better. So that means at the end of the day, surgery will remain the standard, but for those who are not fit for surgery, I repeat, for those who are not fit for surgery, radiosurgery is at least a good alternative comparing to all other alternatives that exist. So that is the message. Thank you.